Hello, I'm Holden Thorpe. I have the opportunity to chair the National Academy of Sciences Committee on Promoting a Culture of Safety in Academic Chemical Research. The committee membership was made up of physical and life scientists and behavioral scientists. We held public hearings where we heard testimony from many academic and industry safety experts, and we toured through several top laboratories and top research institutions across the country. What became quickly apparent is that faculty, staff, and students in academic teaching and research settings often do not understand nor appreciate the hazards that are present in their work settings. Let me share an example with you. Walking through a top-tier biomedical research university on the West Coast, we frequently saw researchers wearing shorts and sandals in the laboratory with no lab coat or safety glasses. The researchers were working with high-voltage equipment, acrylamide gels, solvents, and corrosives. When asked, the researchers felt that they were not working with anything dangerous. This is in stark contrast to what you will find in many corporate research settings for agriculture, biomedical, electronics, materials, or pharmaceutical research. In looking at the cultural reasons for the differences in safety attitudes, our committee found that academic researchers could learn much from industries like aviation, healthcare, industrial research, and the nuclear industry. The principal investigator role is more than heading a team of researchers. It encompasses many skills and responsibilities. Many of you probably had a similar experience to mine. Go to graduate school, get a postdoctoral fellowship, get a tenure track appointment, do research and publish, hopefully attain tenure, a few patents, and some other things. During that time, you were probably never told that you were becoming a small business owner with responsibilities for hiring and managing people, managing budgets, ordering supplies and equipment, helping design research space, in addition to teaching and setting the research directions for your lab, securing grants, and publishing results. One of the most important responsibilities you will have as a principal investigator is setting the tone for safety expectations and leading by example. This may be difficult if your peers or department chair do not have a similar safety mindset. You are going to have to be comfortable holding your graduate students, postdoctoral fellows and staff to appropriate safety and compliance expectations. This includes fellow faculty visiting your research space. You are going to have to lead by ensuring that everyone does a proper hazard analysis before beginning work, making sure safety equipment such as fume hoods and biosafety cabinets are operating properly, and personal protective equipment or PPE, such as lab coats, safety goggles, and gloves are available and used when needed. Making sure everyone feels comfortable reporting near-miss incidents so all can learn in order to prevent more serious future accidents. Several high-profile accidents and fatalities in academic research laboratories have shown us that we need to change how we approach safety in colleges, universities, and research institutions. They include the 1997 death of Professor Karen Wetterhahn at Dartmouth University due to accidental exposure of two drops of dimethylmercury absorbed through her latex gloves in her research lab. The 2008 accident that led to the death of 23-year-old UCLA researcher Sherry Sanji, who suffered severe burns and later died from a splash of pyrophoric reagent T-butyl lithium on her clothes. And in 2016, postdoctoral researcher Thea Eakins cowered at the University of Hawaii, lost her arm, and sustained other injuries in a laboratory hydrogen gas explosion. Any loss of life is a compelling case for all of us to improve research safety. Our top research academies and organizations have all publicly proclaimed that research safety must be a priority. Some of these include the National Research Council, Association of Public and Land Grant Universities, U.S. Chemical Safety Board, and the American Chemical Society. Links to these organizations' recommendations and resources are included later in this training. Something that caught many faculty members' attention was the 2008 UCLA lab fatality case. For the first time, a professor was indicted on criminal felony charges for the death of a researcher in his laboratory. The case was eventually settled, but it had reverberations beyond the incident. Since then, criminal felony charges were filed in 2015 by the EPA against a University of Missouri staff member for disposing of sulfuric acid down a storm drain. This case is still pending. 
And in December of 2015, the Departments of Labor and Justice signed a memorandum of understanding stating that they will criminally prosecute managers and supervisors for worker safety violations that involve chemicals, environmental damage, severe injuries, or death. What this means is that regulatory agencies and organizations beyond your institution are now holding all of us accountable for safety in our laboratories. For these reasons, and because I know we all want to do the right thing, please actively engage in the safety education that has been supplied as the starting point for leading a safe research lab. Take the concepts from this education back to your research setting and figure out how to make it part of the fabric of your lab's research culture. You will find it leads to better research outcomes and a better, more productive work environment. You are the engine of innovation for our future. We wish you much success and a safe journey. Thank you.